Hi, today, I'm going to explain a science fiction thriller film called The Titan. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The premise of the movie is based in 2048. Several cars drive along the Atlantic Ocean to the NATO operating base. One of the cars stops in front of a mansion. A woman shows a family of three inside the mansion, which is now their new home. The father, Rick Jansen, his wife, Dr. Abigail Jansen, and his son, Lucas are surprised, clearly not used to the lavishness of the place. The three stand in front of their private swimming pool, when Lucas asks Rick where he is going. Rick shows him a direction towards the sky. The camera pans out showing similar houses in the neighborhood, suggesting that the people who came in the other cars were given similar houses. The next morning, Professor Martin Collingwood visits the family. The couple is happy to see him. Rick thanks the professor for selecting him for the mission, but the professor instead reminds him of the risks involved in the mission. The professor says he is grateful for their service, and leaves. Cut to a NATO conference. The professor speaks in front of a group. In the year 2048, the Earth's natural resources have been used to their pieces. People begin to fight for whatever remains of the resources, and wars between the countries are prevalent. He predicts that in 10 years, half of the planet will be uninhabitable, and in 15 years, half of the world's current population will starve to death. Human beings' time is running out because they have outgrown their homes. The professor claims that their children will witness the end of the world. However, amidst all this, he claims that there is hope, the hope being the largest moon of Saturn named Titan. The only other body besides Earth in the solar system that has an atmosphere, making it the most inhabitable body in the solar system besides the Earth. But it is in no way ready to be inhabited by humans. As liquid methane rains on the heavenly body, the atmosphere is filled with nitrogen, and the temperature is extremely low. The professor claims, space science says that Titan cannot be livable for humans but he has a different approach. He wants to use modern genetics to make people adapt to the nature of the planet, rather than trying to make the planet inhabitable for humans. Hence, Rick and 13 others in the team have been called to be experimented upon to make them adapt to the environment of Titan. He claims, with little enhancements in their body, they will be able to breathe nitrogen in its air and survive the cold of Titan. Everyone there knows of the risk of the experiment, but they are willing to put their lives in danger, for the future generation. Their main aim is to be able to establish Titan as humans' new home planet. The group has been chosen from 5,000 people in 16 different countries for this specific task, because of their ability to survive. One person at the convention argues that the process is a forced evolution and none of them will survive in the end, but the others claim they know of the risks. After the convention, the group is given their respective key cards and taken to a lab. The experiment's helper, Dr. Freya Upton, gives Rick a shot and informs him that he will be getting over 300 shots in the next week. The shots are to train them to burn nitrogen instead of oxygen for energy, because the level of oxygen in Titan is only 5%, which is less than Earth's 20%. Cut to their mansions, all 14 of the volunteers and their families have been given the lavish homes next to each other, hence Abigail invites everyone for a barbecue weekend. They all dance, eat and drink together. This is the last time they will be allowed to drink alcohol, so they enjoy it. Abigail is drunk after the party, so Rick helps her get to their room, but before they can, he begins to cough aggressively. Abigail helps him and sees he is burning with fever. She gives him some medicine and puts him to bed. In the next experiment, the volunteers are made to sit underwater for as long as they can. The last ones inside are Rick and a girl named Tally. The two have been underwater for 31 minutes. Everyone outside is happy and surprised that the experiments have worked. Tally starts suffocating and goes to the surface in 39 minutes, but Rick still stays inside. His vitals seem to be dropping, so everyone gets worried. However, Rick starts swimming across the pool at great speed, showing his progress. Everyone cheers and claps for him. He has been underwater for 42 minutes. At night, Rick tells his son Lucas about Titan's conditions as a bedtime story. The kid is thrilled to know that his father will be able to live on another planet soon. Rick then joins his wife in the swimming pool, where she notices the nerves on his back being prominent. She labels it as a side effect of the shots he has been given, but is worried for him. As time goes by, Abigail and Ryan, the wife of another volunteer, become friends. Ryan tells her that she didn't want her husband to come here, but he doesn't listen to anything she says. Rick goes through surgery that day. Abigail, being a doctor, reads the book they were given, that has all the procedures Rick has to go through. She sees that all of them are safe, so she is relieved. At night, she wakes up, and notices that Rick is missing from their bed. She goes to the kitchen, and sees him applying ice on his body. He says he was burning in their bed. 
Abigail brings out a bucket of ice and Rick puts his hands in there. He asks his wife to do the same, but she brings her hands out, not bearing the cold. Rick then claims that he cannot feel any cold. He has adapted to live in Titan's cold temperature. In one experiment, the group is made to swim underwater as the place is filled with methane gas as it would be on Titan. Next, they are made to run around a field for as long as they can, while breathing methane and nitrogen. They do the same exercise for several days. The group is in the changing room, when Rick notices a lot of his hair falling. Tally tries to see if it's true and gets a lump of hair out of his head. Just then, one of the female volunteers vomits out blood and falls on the ground struggling. The others try to help her and call the officials. Dr. Freya tries to help her, but she dies on the ground before she can do anything. The group is shocked as the harsh reality of the experiment is starting to show. That night, everyone gathers at Rick's home again and discusses the matter. Abigail notices all the volunteers' nerves being prominent for some seconds, and then disappearing, although no one else seems to notice. Ryan and her husband are outside in the pool. Her husband has been panicking because of the death. As the others talk, he hits Ryan on her face and loses control. The others go to help the girl, and restrain the man. His brain has not been handling the experiments well. The following day, Dr. Freya comes over to Rick's to test his vitals. She claims that the girl who died has kidney stones which altered the experiments, causing her to die. At night, Rick cannot stop vomiting blood. Abigail takes a sample of it to investigate it herself. While shutting the doors, she sees a light blinking from the walls, and realizes that they are being watched. Rick is in the swimming pool, when his skin starts to peel off and float. Later when they sleep, Abigail sees Rick's back has peeled too. Abigail takes the sample to the lab the next morning, and sees that it has several compounds that the book didn't talk about. The lab performs eye surgery on Rick that day. It is to allow him to see through the darkness. He goes home after the surgery, but has to be rushed back to the hospital when his eyes start to bleed uncontrollably. Abigail meets the professor and accuses him of not telling them everything about the procedure. She confronts him about the cameras that he claims are for security reasons. He dismisses her and sends her home. As soon as she is home, she sees large army vans arriving at Ryan's home. She rushes to see what is happening, but a soldier stops her. Just then, someone throws Ryan out of the window, her dead body is lying on the front porch. Ryan's husband has gone completely wild because of the experiments. One night, Abigail takes Rick's key card and sneaks into the facility. She finds the volunteer's medical file and sees that the girl who died didn't have kidney stones. The professor and the team are in a meeting with NASA. The professor is chastised for doing forced evolutionary experimentation without proper evidence or ethical reasons. He is threatened with having his operation shut down. When the professor comes to visit Rick at his home, he tells Abigail that he does not actually know the effects of the experiments yet, but they cannot go back now. The subjects will be turned into a new species of humans called the Homo Titanians, and will be different from Homo sapiens, but since everybody evolves in a different way, they do not know what Rick will turn to after the full experiment. Later, Rick opens the bandage from his eyes and is surprised to see everything around, even in the dark. His eyes have evolved. The following day, they perform a vital surgery on the subjects, but all of them die except for Rick and Tally. Now, the future of humanity lies on the two. Abigail is brought to the facility after the surgery, and is surprised to see her husband turn into a different creature altogether. But it is evident that he still remembers them. They have turned completely into Homo Titanians. They can listen to the humans talking, but cannot talk back because they communicate in a low frequency that is undetectable by normal human ears. Rick comes home that night and accidentally hits Abigail. He is later swimming, when a loud thud is heard outside. Tally has come to visit him. With her, several guards also approach the house. It turns out that she has killed her husband. The soldiers sedate Tally and try to take Rick too, but he easily kills them all with his newfound power. He only stops when Abigail asks him to. The officials then take him to the facility and keep him in a glass cell. Rick is now ready to be sent to Titan, but his emotional attachment with Abigail and Lucas stops him from proceeding. So the professor asks Abigail to inject him with a compound to erase his memories. Abigail obliges and gives him the shot. Rick shakes his head, suggesting that he doesn't want to forget her. Abigail comes out of the cell, takes Lucas and Dr. Freya, and runs away, as it turns out she gave him a different compound to help him escape. Rick pretends to be unconscious and kills a soldier. The others are alerted, but his evolved abilities help him escape easily. Rick meets his wife and son in one of the labs, but is quickly surrounded by soldiers. The professor explains to Abigail that Rick's evolution is irreversible, and he cannot go back to being human now. 
His only way to survive is to go to Titan. Seeing that she has completely lost her old husband, Abigail finally agrees to let him go away, for the sake of humanity and its survival. In the next scene, we see them in an airplane. Rick lies in a body bag and is being taken to be sent to Titan. Cut to a few months later, the professor has been arrested for using unethical methods. Abigail and Freya have taken over the Titan II facility. Lucas calls his mother outside to make her look at the clear night sky. Somewhere far away in the galaxy, we see Rick standing on the mountains of Titan. He has fully adapted to its environment. He spreads his webbed arms and flies in its sky.